I am poet. I am good at what I do. I enjoy what I do. I make a living doing what I do. And I'm able to inspire others with that. And I think that's great. Tell, tell I become so consumed in their darkness that I forget, I forget, I forget that I am the one Hey everybody, what's up? It is Cindy Celeste. I am a full-time spoken word poet and artistic entrepreneur based here in Barbados. And this July, I am going to have the absolute pleasure of representing Barbados at the Medellin International Poetry Festival in Colombia. I am also thankfully and gratefully launching my second album, Love In My Language, which is coming on June 22nd, but I'm launching it at my show for the first time ever on May 25th. When I was younger, probably in single digits, I used to go to the Nifka Gala every single year. And every year on the program, me and my mother would look, okay, is DJ Simmons, Miss Adrian Green. <laughs> so from a very young age, even though I wasn't necessarily always sure what Adrian and DJ were talking about, I just knew that they had this superpower to hold an audience with what seemed like nothing but words at the time. And I remember thinking, mommy, I want to do that. I want to be able to, to command an audience and a space the same way these people do. And I hadn't seen a lot of women doing it at that time either. So it was even more of a, of a motivation to get into the world of spoken word poetry. We are world class. It's world class, right? It's world class that Gabby's Emerton got in one of the classes. Some world class that groups are brilliant is an audio autobiography. Some world class that we national anthem on the track list for global athletics. We are friends of all, satellites of none, plug into all. All as one. Well. I remember I was in Subway during Christmas season, and this little girl was behind me with her mum. She tugged on my dress and she was like, You're Cindy Celeste. I like your poetry. And it was one of the most proud moments of my career because I was like, It's good to know that the thing that I wanted to be able to do, which is reach as many people from as many generations as possible, was already happening. The year that, unfortunately, I lost my mother, which was 2020, I also was named Gainan People's Choice Poet of the Year. And that award was presented to me. That award was, in and of itself, absolutely flattering to me because I hadn't done any campaigning, I hadn't asked people to vote, I was kind of out of it and not really aware of what was going on because I was dealing with my mother's passing and stuff and my friends told me, you know, you should still go, just go and take your mind off it and whatnot. So when I won the award, I was already floored. But then it was presented to me by Barbados's first poet laureate, Esther Phillips, and I was like, there's a reason that this moment happened the way that it was that that it happened entire existences sold into the prison of a cruel system of colonial capitalism thrown into a vicious cycle of brainwash bleaching culture from memory wiping clean identities wringing out every stain of dignity until nothing could remain when i was asked to do the speech for the decommissioning of the horatio nelson statue that's really only a big moment for me personally in retrospect because i did not realize at the time what i was being like the the gravity of what i was being called to do and the doors it would open thereafter um, I remember opening the folder because I didn't have time to memorize all five or six parts of the poem that I wrote, of the speech that I wrote. And my hand was shaking so much. They had just played the anthem. The MC had not told the crowd to sit. And I was like, am I supposed to say, please be seated? You know what, I'm just gonna start. But then after that, like, it was just a series of very fortunate events. And the following year, which would be the third crowning moment, was when I became the Republic Poet. And I'm literally, like, no one can ever take from me the fact that I was there in that history-making, history-defining moment of Barbados becoming a Republic. Best moments of my career. Success as an artist, for me, looks like self-repair. For me, looks like not just self-repair, but self-repair towards the rehabilitation of community 
and I'm not just talking about like my neighbors, I'm not just talking about the different community groups I exist in and community spaces I exist in. I talk about community as society, community as the people you care about, community as a global, on a global scale, um, self repair work and being able to use the art form and the art form that I've been gifted with really to affect social change or to affect change, positive change on any level, that is a success for me. And also just being able to do what I love in a world that so often tells you you have to do things you don't like to do in order to survive and in order to thrive. It is one of the grandest successes to me to be able to say I live and thrive doing the thing that I love the most. You can find me online. I am on Instagram, I am on Twitter. I'm pretty sure I'm on Facebook still. <laughs> and I am on YouTube. The YouTube is, we're working on it. Um, but I am most easily found on Instagram at cindy.celeste and that's C-Y-N-D-I-C-E-L-E-S-T-E. And um, my first album is out on all streaming platforms, all the popular ones, Spotify, Deezer, Pandora, Apple Music, iTunes. I feel like I'm missing some. I never get them all, but I try. And everywhere else, I think it's just Cindy Celeste poetry. Yeah, but there's definitely some stuff in the works coming, so I'm very, very excited. And you should find me somewhere on social media if you want to stay tuned.